What's up guys, it's Don't Matter here, and today we are going to be reacting to Common Sense Soapbox Student Loan Forgiveness is Cancer. I've never actually seen this channel to me, uh, or I've never actually seen this channel before, but it was recommended to me on a couple of my different uh, reacting to Freedom Tunes videos. Uh, apparently it's pretty similar to Freedom Tunes, it's kind of, you know, uh, I guess like you could call it just like right wing funny stuff. I don't even know what you'd call it. Like, just right-wing uh, funny animations. Uh, but yeah, links link to the originals down below, and remember to like, comment, subscribe to help with the algorithm. Oh, wait. This is made by Seamus as well? He's another channel? I had no idea. They've got to find some way to get people to watch CNN. Oh, come on. Even at the airport, who's desperate enough to... Shh. Guys, my favorite reporter's on. With his student debt relief plan, the president is personally forgiving your student loan. <laughs> oh, they have the evil Biden fucking... Uh, I don't even know what you'd call it. Like, the evil Biden uh, backdrop there from his, like, fucking speech was, like, pseudo-fascist. Up to $10,000. I can't believe this. Oh, boy. Brilliant! Hey, it's what Bubble Man would have wanted. That's right. Who the fuck is Bubble Man? Is this, uh, is this like an ongoing joke with this series that I'm just not familiar with? And honestly, student loan forgiveness is like one of the funniest things to me. Like, unintentionally funny. Because you have all these people who are, you know, going to be professionals, right? They're going to be professionals. Half them LARP about caring about the working class, right? Um, some of these jobs are going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. It really depends on what you go for, right? Obviously, if you're like a fucking, you know, going for like lesbian dance theory or fucking, you know, LGBT fucking, uh, you know, history or some nonsense like that, you're not going to make shit. But, you know, if you're like a lawyer or in STEM or, you know, one of these different fields that does make a lot of money, um, you know, you're going to be earning 10, 15 times what a person that fucking is going to have to pay off your student loan is, right? Because they're taxing the working class, right? So the working class is paying for you to get an education. It's kind of funny. It's like these people will LARP about wanting to help the working class, but then they'll tax the working class so that, you know, they can get a free education, right? Pay for my education, peasants. That's why I'm upset. Ron, almost all of this debt exists because the government was pushing loans to begin with. Of course. Yeah. Oh, I think they're going to get in the details there. The National Bureau of Economic Research subsidized loans mean more expensive college tuition. And this is just another subsidy that's going to cause the cost of tuition to inflate. It will. 100%. And then you also, on top of that, you see like the, the, like the, the massive expansion of administration within a lot of these universities. Um, you know, like, and a lot of these courses that didn't even exist 10, 15 years ago, or were like really fringe courses 10, 15 years ago, are now mandatory. Like, you can go, some universities, if you go to like get a STEM degree, they'll have like, you know, womenist, uh, women's studies and feminist studies and all this other shit is like part of your mandatory courses. And so I'm here for engineering. Why the fuck do I need to learn any of this? And a lot of schools are starting to do that. And then you get like all of these like different HR departments and like African s studies and women's studies and LGBT studies and all these different departments. Uh, and they build up like this administrative bloat, right? If you got the government out of the education system and you made it entirely private, instantly all that bloat would be gone because it's not beneficial, right? The only reason they do it is because they're able to through these massive subsidies. Will literally only make things worse. You should be happy for me and for everyone else who's taken out a student loan they'll never repay. Ron, I paid my loans off the hard way. Why do I gotta pay yours off the hard way too? That's like someone surviving cancer and then being upset that a cure is found for people who are just diagnosed, you ghoul. Dude, you chose to take out loans. You don't choose to get cancer. Yeah, it's more like someone who's never had cancer being given cancer by someone who does have it. Ah, you're giving me cancer just talking about this. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a like a terrible comparison, right? The the idea that it's like cancer. You willingly choose to do this because you think it's going to be beneficial, and for a lot of people it is, right? There's a huge anti-college university movement, and I think largely that depends on what you're going into. I think the movement shouldn't be anti-college university. It should be anti horseshit degrees, right? If you're going, again, like for like a, a feminist studies degree or, you know, some other nonsense like LGBT studies or any of these like nonsense degrees, pretty much anything that ends in studies, right? If you're going for one of these degrees, 
it's fucking nonsense. You're probably not going to be able to find a job unless you're finding a job in the Ponzi scheme that is teaching that stuff, right? Where, but if you go for, like, STEM, those are great jobs. Like, even lower-end jobs from a university degree in STEM, you can make, like, after five or ten years, upwards of 100K a year, right? Like, you can make really good money from a lot of these STEM jobs. And that's why people want to do it. And the problem is that when you have it subsidized to the, to the amount that it is nowadays... It just bloats up the, you know, the cost of this, right? And, you know, the, you have these, this debt subsidization, these loan subsidizations, and then people are willing to take out, you know, you know, for medical degrees, I think you could, there's, if I'm not mistaken, some of those, you know, like $300,000 plus of student debt that these people rack up, which is absolutely insane, right? Hundreds of thousands of dollars of student debt. Why does it cost that much? Well, it costs that much because the government's subsidizing that, Right. And because of all the administrative bloat. And so much of that would just not be there in a private system. But people are still willingly putting themselves in this, right? Nobody willingly gives themselves cancer. It, it's just not an apt comparison. And, and it's not an apt comparison in the idea that, like, oh, so they found a cure for cancer, so now, you know, we should, you know, not, uh, you know, because we found a cure after you were, I guess, cured. Right, like after you know yours went to remission or whatever, right? Like you had some performance, probably like radiation or something, whatever, and they found like a magic pill that cures it. It's like that's not a really good comparison because instead of you curing it, you're basically passing it on to somebody else, right? That debt still exists; it still has to be paid off, and it's still going to be paid off. It's just now it's going to be paid off by the taxpayers, which a lot of the time is going to be the working class people that didn't go to get this education, right? Something like only, if I'm not mistaken, in most Western countries, only like 40% of people go to universities. And a lot of those people are going for bullshit degrees, right? Um, that they're not going to be able to pay their student debt off. And then other people are going for, you know, degrees that they actually are, like STEM degrees and shit like that. You know, obviously the people that are paying, that are going for STEM degrees, a lot of them are going to pay off their college debt because they're going to be able to, right? So you have this class of useless people who went to university for these bullshit degrees having the working class they pretend to fight for pay off their degrees while claiming that they're trying to help the working class, right? It's, it's just absolutely ridiculous. What about people who have already paid off more money than they borrowed because of the insane interest rates? That's one group I can sympathize with. These are federally guaranteed loans, so the idea of making insane amounts of interest off of them seems very wrong to me. But that's a separate discussion from the government offering blanket loan forgiveness to everyone, even people who have barely paid in at all. But this is- Not only that, but you agreed to those insane interest rates, right? Like, realistically, you could have- I know people that took a year or two off between high school and university and went and saved up a bunch of fucking cash before they went, that way they would have no student debt. Right? A lot of them went and worked like construction jobs or factory jobs or whatever. They still lived with their parents for that year or two. And then instead of going to college at 18, they went at 19, 20, 21. Right? You could have easily done that, but you didn't have the foresight to. And, you know, so somehow that's everyone else's fault. And now they have to pay for it because you signed up for some insane interest rate. This is going to help so many people who are struggling. Just think of all those poor PhDs flipping burgers. I wish I had an active enough imagination. PhDs have a 1.1% unemployment rate, and considering their average salary is over $90,000 a year, I think it's safe to say that the 98.9% .9 who are employed aren't flipping burgers. In fact, roughly 50% of college debt is owed by people with a master's degree or higher, meaning that on average they make twice as much as people with no college education, and their unemployment rate is three times lower. And you- Yeah, great point, right? Again, it's the working class paying for the professionals, right? And, and these people, a lot of the time, they claim to be fighting for the working class. Although the one thing I would say is how much of that, you know, PhDs make X amount is brought up by engineers, doctors, um, computer scientists. Because those are like those high profession jobs or high paying professional jobs. Lawyers, right? These jobs where you can make half a million a year in a lot of these cases versus, you know, some gender studies bullshit, right? I mean, again, some of those people will be, like, tenured professors and shit in that, you know, gender studies nonsense. And I think a tenured professor depends on where you work, but I think they average somewhere around 130 to 140 k a year, if I'm not mistaken. So even they will be bringing it up as long as they're high enough in the Ponzi scheme that they were able to actually get it. Um, but again, they're half the reason that the fucking shit costs so much, right? Because you need to pay those fucking ridiculous people that much money. And again, like, who's, who's going to pay for it? The working class. Right? The working class is going to have to pay for that.
You think they shouldn't have to pay for that privilege? For the fact that they got to spend six years out of the workforce just to step out into the world with a massive economic advantage despite never having contributed any good or service before? Even worse, you think people without a degree who make half the amount are the ones who should cover the cost. You don't need a yep. break on your loans, we need a break from you! Uh, attention flyers, the bubble man- Yeah, and these people, they, they pretend to fight for the working class, which is like the really annoying thing, right? They always get mad at the working class for not voting the right way, right? Not voting to spend more of their tax money when they can barely make, it, make ends meet. You know, how dare you not want to give us half of your $50,000 a year? You know, it's ridiculous. Land Memorial Airline Flight 675 back to Florida has been delayed. Yeah, looks like we're going to be here a while. I could use a drink. Which one of you is buying? Thank you so <laughs> much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. Also, check out the links in the description because we bring the receipts and leave a comment below. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to leave a link down to this uh, below. I did not know Seamus had a second channel, or maybe he was just a guest on this channel. Uh, no, he was a writer on this. It produced by Sean Malone, written by Lou Perez, Seamus uh, Coughlin, and Sean Malone. I did not realize he had a second channel. I'm going to have to give them a sub. That's great. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.